Hey everybody, Ken Kasha here, the Silver Methods Lead Instructor and International Training Director, as well as the founder of the Trust Your Intuition Academy. Welcome. I am so glad you're here. I appreciate your interest because in today's episode, we're going to talk about confidence. And I want to share with you some tools, techniques, if you will, a life hack that will help you to stand on the foundation of genuine, authentic confidence that's built on actual evidence from your life's experiences. I say that because we've all had the experience of, you know, the expression, fake it until you make it, that false sense of bravado, which when the going gets tough and we're navigating life, it doesn't seem to hold up. In fact, have you ever struggled with that nagging sense of self doubt, that voice that just won't shut up, especially at night when you sleep and if you wake up, that dictates to you what you can do or can't do. In psychology, it's been called the inner critic, the doubting Thomas within us, the inner gatekeeper. There's lots of expressions and basically we all go through it throughout our lifetime and there's perhaps nothing more mentally crippling that self-sabotages all of our efforts than lack of confidence in ourselves or the lack of confidence that somehow, some way we can figure things out. Because let's face it, sometimes we just don't have the answers and sometimes we're not sure how things. Life is full of uncertainties and the answer is not to be certain. I don't know that anybody can be completely 100% certain, but what we can do is clarify our vision. What we can do is get clear about our intent. What we can do is focus and build life's experience, the kind that we can look back and say, you know, I've been through similar challenges like this, and if I did it before, I can do it again. So think about it. Have you ever struggled in perhaps your relationships? You're seeking a new romantic relationship, or you're building new friendships, or you moved to a new location, or you're going on a job interview, or you're giving a presentation of sorts. And if we have self-doubt, if we start worrying excessively, if we put the focus on ourselves and more concerned about how we show up rather than the value, what we bring to the game, it's inevitable. We're going to raise the stress hormones in the body. We're going to weaken ourselves and we're going to, it's going to interfere in our performance. You know that. You've been there. I can still remember in 1971 when I first got involved in this field with the Silver Method. I was 19 year old college student struggling, flunking out by using these tools and building my confidence and other meditation tools. I literally graduated cum laude, highest honors. And it was while I was in school teaching. But you know, I had no training, no public speaking training. It wasn't even part of the organization. I had an intense desire to make a difference, to make a contribution, to do some good. And the first time I got the chance to speak, boy, I froze. I turned white as a ghost. I went blank. I couldn't think. I was perspiring. I, you know, drenched right through everything. Can you relate? That's an example of what it can do to us. Had I not risen to the occasion, got some training, asked for help, and practiced and practiced, I probably never would have continued. In, and I'm so blessed and fortunate to, it's brought me around the world to as many different countries. I work with hundreds of thousands of people. I get to coach people. I've worked with people from just about every socioeconomic level, from the highest to the lowest, people of all walks of life. And I can tell you, One thing we all share in common is the need to believe in ourselves, the need to conquer the fear of failure, the fear of success even, and that nagging sense of self-doubt like, oh, gee, can I do it? Come on, I know you've been there in one way. If you're an entrepreneur and just launching a business, that can be quite an experience. If you're concerned about your health and your well-being and you've gone from one physician to another physician, one expert to another expert, and you're not getting the answers you want or need and they don't know what to do for you, talk about 
challenging your confidence. If you're involved in sports, whether it be playing golf, playing tennis, or anything aspect, it's so important because if we start to lose hope, because that's what confidence is about, having the faith, the trust, that somehow, some way, we can figure things out. And by the way, that doesn't happen because we believe it. It happens because we have that confidence. And when we have hope, when we have faith, then we're more likely to what? Act, take action, ask for help, read a book, take a training, whatever it might be. Somehow, some way to then develop the skills and the competencies that are needed to do the job we want to do. Again, I know you know that. Think about it though. How many people do you know, and maybe you're one of those people, who are quite expert at what you do, and you settle for less, you settle for mediocrity, you settle for being working for someone, let's say, when everybody tells you you should go out on your own. You could have more free time, more flexibility, and probably even earn more. I've had that so often. I remember an accountant once in my class, and this guy was like one of the best of the best. But he kept saying, but you know, I got a family counting on me, and what if I don't build up my practice? What if I don't earn enough money? And I'm not able to support my family because he had the what? Security of the regular paycheck guaranteed. <laughs> but let's face it, nowadays nothing's guaranteed. Too often, they just gobble us up and spit us out. And I mean no disrespect, but I'm so happy I'm self-employed. I work for myself because I make my own life. And it's not necessary, but it, it doesn't matter. You don't have to be self-employed working for someone. In any aspect of our lives, we all have a tendency to have a little bit of self-doubt, to maybe be overly critical on ourselves, to blame ourselves. And then again, you may not be blessed to have people who are championing you, people who will cheer you on. Instead, you maybe have people who care about you, who love you, and they think they're helping, but they don't want you to be hurt, and they tell you that, so they're your naysayers, and they're your critics, and they ah, oh, you can never do that. You know, when I first started teaching the Silver Method, and I expressed the interest, my family said, oh, you can never do it, you're so impatient, and I had a speech impediment. When I was in first grade, I was getting speech lessons because I had a very strong lisp. If you listen closely, you'll hear a little bit of it. And it's not something that was in, you know, in, our, in our area of expertise. Oh, when are you going to get a real job? I've been, well, I don't hear it anymore. For, but if we buy into that, and if we don't have the inner, and I'm talking not the bravado, but the genuine, authentic, confidence that we resonate with, that's within us, that we bring with us. Now, why is that important? And how will that enhance your performance? I said before, if you lose hope, you lose everything. So if we start losing hope and we start feeling helpless and hopeless, that's the precursor to depression. And even if we don't get depressed, when we start losing hope that we can figure things out or the faith that we can, we what? Prematurely give up. We could be this close, just this close to making it big or, or breaking through. And we stop short of the mark because of losing it. Now, I'm not just talking psychologically, yes, psychologically, but I'm talking physiologically in the science, the neuroscience behind it. Because when the stress levels increase, when we feel helpless and hopeless, the stress hormones will dramatically increase. There's a complex cascading of chemical changes in the body that basically impede performance. Why? Because it cuts off the flow of oxygen and blood to the brain. And when that happens, the frontal lobes, the seat of the higher thinking functions of the brain are the first to go. And we have trouble thinking clearly. We go into what I call the duh, or we make silly mistakes. Come on, the most common mistake you've ever made, or the most common time when you've made a mistake, is when you're feeling stressed and overwhelmed, or you leave something out. And confidence, lack of confidence, self-doubt, that nagging voice, that like the monkey mind that just won't shut up, will cause those stress levels to increase and will affect your whole physiology and your whole performance. I remember when I used to run track. I was a long-distance runner. 
And the last thing you wanted to do was reflect on who you were competing against. Oh my God, this guy is the best. I, I don't know if I can even, because you psych yourself out. And sometimes I found, I admit, some of my best races were run when I broke records in practice. <laughs> I admit, I was a head case in my younger years. And even now, I've got to be really careful all throughout my career in learning new technologies, in speaking before. I've been to 27 different countries. I've been as far away as Kazakhstan, to Turkey, to the Middle East, to, to Manila, to Europe, to Australia, to different cultures. And, and yes, people are people, but you got to learn to blend. And I work with translators. And let me tell you, sometimes, you know, you kind of, can I do it again? And then you finish a presentation and you hit all your marks and you get a standing ovation. And listen to people who are champions. Listen to people who are top performers. One of the challenges is when you're a top performer, everybody's chasing you, modeling, copying you. And then there's that nagging question, can I keep it up? Can I sustain this? How long can I sustain this? Again, self-doubt. So, this video is not about where it comes from, but let's just say we all have a history from our childhood right up to the present moment of environmental cues, social cues, and so on, that have not exactly encouraged or inspired us. And if you don't take action and get some training or ask for help or read some books or practice and practice, it's not going to get better, it'll just get worse. So I sincerely hope I'm about to share with you this tool. It's a very simple, very straightforward tool that is very powerful and you will notice a difference. It's how you can literally shift your state from feeling fearful and you know, shaking or concerned, can I do it again? To entering into a new situation, a new performance, a new business deal, a new presentation, a new business, a new whatever it might be, a new relationship with a feeling of confidence and certainty. The kind that makes you like a magnet to attract and influence more effectively. And that is essential. So the science behind this is all of our life's experiences have been impressed and are stored literally at a cellular level all throughout the body. And that means the bad stuff, the negative stuff, the traumas, and of course, the good stuff is all there. And the key is our thoughts are the catalyst. So when we think about something, when we recall something, that becomes a trigger, like a light switch, to feelings. And those feelings, you know, from the past, even though we're not experiencing it now, if we're not mindful, if we're not conscious of this, it will then change our whole physiology and we experience it as if we're there, even though it was 10, 20 years, or 40 years ago. It doesn't matter. And it changes our whole physiology. And sometimes it's very obvious, and sometimes it's very subtle. But it'll affect your speech, it'll affect your voice, it'll affect your facial expressions, it'll affect how the energy you put out there, and whether you are, have a positive influence and attract, or whether you're repelling. We also know that it affects our states of calm and relaxation. So for example, athletes are more likely to get injured when they're stressed, when they're worried. And often when, if you're a speaker, for example, if you're a business person, if you're worried, that means you're putting too much emphasis on yourself. Think about how you can help them. Think about the value you're going to add. So here's the hack. And I want you to please do this in just about any and every aspect of your life, every category of your life that is important to you. So if it were your business, you want to, if you've started businesses before or in your present business, can you remember a time when you were at your best, when things were rolling along and you were making steady progress, hitting all your marks? Be careful because often we have selective memory. That could be a good resource state, meaning you've done it before, you've had that experience. So what I want you to do then is to relive it, to remember it, the positive that is, and involve as if you were there. It'd be best if you close your eyes, a few slow, deep belly breaths, and as if you were there, relive it as best you can. Involve all of your senses as best you can to make it as dramatic. So you want to elevate the emotions and the feeling 
to experience it as if you were there. And that will literally, and you do this before you go to talk to a new client. You do this before you go to work with a new patient. You do this before you go to a strategy session, a mastermind, a business meeting, a presentation you're giving. Similarly, in your, in your health and your wellness, can you remember a time in your past when you were in better shape, when you were slimmer, trimmer, feeling better, more vitality, more energy? It's not rocket science. What were your behaviors? What were your actions? What was your lifestyle? What were the actual actions that you were taking? Relive it as if you were there. And what it does is it fills us full of hope and confidence and it changes our physiology that will activate the higher thinking functions of the brain. And by the way, you're more likely then to have intuitive insights. One of the blocks to intuitive wisdom is stress, distress, worry, uncertainty, doubt. So there's so many benefits to you. You will think more clearly. You will make better, wiser decisions. You're more likely to have innovative thoughts, creative expression. Maybe you're a writer. Maybe you're a painter, an artist of, of sorts, a dancer. And you, you know, it's inevitable. Or an athlete and you're in a slump or you have some block and you just, it's like the flow's not there anymore. Stop, eyelids closed, a few slow deep breaths and think of a time. It could be 50 years ago, 10 minutes ago, 10 days. It doesn't matter how far back, as long as you can what? Remember it and relive it as if you were there. Involve all of your senses, same thing. And what that does is, it gets you into that state. It gets you into the zone. It's a proven process that countless people have used to their benefit. I'm not the only one teaching about obviously changing state. This is something we teach now in the Silver Method and what I call this immersion experience of life and intuition system. It's in day two when we talk about the three fingers technique and we develop triggers so that we can sustain the feeling of confidence so that we can take this focused state of relaxed awareness with us in all that we do. Two, it's a greater stress management tool. So if you're suffering from performance anxiety in any area of your life, you get the idea? How about your finances? How about, I mentioned your business. Think of every and all categories in your life. Just a, 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 a quick example for you. Um, I guess you'd call me old school in that I've been doing, I'm 67 this year. I've been doing this work since 1971, back when there was very few. I've been privileged to be part of the Silver Method. We started in 1966, before there were all these other programs. Many and most thought leaders got their start in the Silver Method in that they were inspired. It was a springboard for them. Look around, listen, ask. There's all sorts of videos were mentioned in so many books. But the point is, in starting that and going back like that, there was very little information. There was very little uh, that, and it was all based on live seminars. So although I don't have a million followers and 400,000 people on Facebook, I have been all over the globe doing live trainings and coaching, up close, intimate settings of 10, 20 people, 50, hundreds, to even as many as a thousand people. That is my expertise. And I hope one day, by the way, that I'll meet you in one of my trainings. I do have some online mini courses. However, I love and so appreciate there's so much more that we can accomplish in a live training. So here I find myself in a new culture. Here I find myself learning new technologies. I don't have this big, huge staff. It's a very simple business model. And I find myself having to learn all the new technologies. And I gotta tell you, sometimes that's a daunting task. I said, oh my God, will I ever learn this? What, what, what am I kidding myself? And by just thinking back to when I was challenged in learning something and reliving that experience and having gotten through it and meeting the challenge, it's like saying again, I've been there, done that. If I did it before, I can do it again. And it will help you to learn. It'll help you to calm down, get focused, and to maintain your confidence. So again, when you have hope, you are more likely to take action. Your behaviors will follow. So I trust and hope that this is of help to you. Please, I'd love to hear from you. Whether you're watching this on Facebook or on YouTube, or wherever this video may appear, 
maybe below or on the side, wherever there's space. I'd love to hear from you, your comments. If you have not subscribed to my YouTube channel, please do. And if you're finding this of value and you can think of people good, please share it. That will help me to get the word out. That will help. It supports me and my work. It encourages me, inspires me, and helps your family and friends who could benefit from this message also. So thanks so much for listening and being here. Until the next time, remember you are far more than what you appear to be. I believe in you. Now it's your turn to believe in yourself. Thanks so much, guys.